Yeah, hi everybody, Ryan here again with you. Uh, today we're putting on a new fifth wheel. I bought this uh, back that April or uh, Easter weekend. That one had that alternator go out a while back. Uh, I was down there at Kenworth and I was just asking about it. I was curious because I knew what they were selling for last summer. Uh, they were about $795 for a whole uh, fifth wheel plate, pretty much complete. And I wasn't planning on getting the uh, pin kit, but uh, I'll show you why in a little bit. I had to get that. Uh, so last year they were selling for $8.95 and I just asked them if they had one and um, they had one in stock for my truck that came, you know, stock that came with it. And uh, they were at $8.95 so they went up $100 and um, we kind of got to talking and they've had, uh, me, and the, me and the parts guy there, uh, we got to talking. They've had a lot of supply issues, logistics, I mean, I don't know, not technically logistics issues, but uh, supply chain issues, I guess you could say. Uh, so there's, and I, I've noticed that on the uh, the farm side too, the ag side with uh, getting equipment parts and all that. Uh, things are kind of getting a little bit strange here um, in 2021, and we're in almost to May now. Um, and I think a lot of it, it could be with the, uh, the whole unemployment thing and all that. I mean, I, I don't know if people that might've been making less and they got, they got or not going back to work, I don't know. I mean, um, it just seems like there's starting to be these little disruptions within the supply chain and all that uh, to where stuff isn't available. You know, um, I, you go to the stores and stuff. I've, I've been selling, I kind of pedal uh, little farm equipment and implement stuff like that. I'll buy stuff and work on it and resell it. And um, I've been selling stuff really quick. I mean, like asking price, no haggling or anything. Uh, we actually had a camper that we just sold. Um, we actually sold it for more than what we paid for it two years ago because um, 16 foot campers, it was two years old, 2019. Uh, there's none on the lots right now. And we, we, we're asking, we paid like 11,700 for it, I think. Uh, and we actually sold it for $12,000, no questions asked. Within 24 hours, it was sold. We had like, and people were mad because it was already sold and they were calling. So, um, so something definitely strange going on. But anyways, long, short story long, I guess. Uh, I was down there and we got to talking about that. I wasn't planning on doing this right away, uh, but since I figured I might as well for 900 bucks or whatever, I better just get it and be done with it. Cause you know, it might be, um, I don't want to call down there like, oh, we're three months out or something like that. So I'd rather just get it. That's why I went ahead and bought it. So it's been sitting here. Um, I was going to go ahead and change it out that weekend, uh, uh, Easter weekend when I was doing that alternator, uh, but I had issues pulling the pins out. Uh, so I wanted to get like a week to where uh, if I had issues, like I, get, I could get parts or whatever. So I don't have a load. Today's Tuesday. I don't have a load until Monday. I have to deliver them next Monday. So I got plenty of time. Uh, and it's going better than what I thought. I already did one side of this. Uh, so let me show you what we got here. So we got new fifth wheel plate with uh, the jaw mechanism, everything. And then I bought a uh, pin set too here, which because uh, of the bushings and uh, these little neoprene sleeve things are already came with a fifth wheel. Then we got the new bolts and the uh, little 10 plate uh, bolt keepers and a little bit of uh, lubrication there for the pins. So this this here, this uh, pin kit was like $350. So it was kind of pricey for that. So uh, gotta show you what you got when you're working on this. So here's what it looks like before you start messing with it, you got a plate on here and these, these, this tabs just fold down to keep the bolts in place. There's bolts, the new ones, they have Loctite on them. Uh, so to take this off, you got to bend these tabs over, then it, they're a three quarter bolt. Uh, just, just take those off. Now these have, you'll see when I take this off here in a minute, there's actually threads in that, I think for a half inch bolt to where you can put a puller on here and pull that out. Uh, but, uh, Needless to say, that don't work very well. So, especially on something this old, because here's the pin from the other side. And you can see how this gets rusted and it almost like mushrooms out. So it's like a nail. And then this goes like this. So you'd be trying to pull this out. So it'd be kind of like trying to pull, you know, an 8D nail or something out of a piece of wood from the opposite end. Like if you're trying to pull the head through is kind of what you're trying to do. And that's, this is really finely machined and I'll show you with the new pins, how it's tight. It's really tight. So you're, you're going to have a, unless you got some type of advanced technology that I don't have here, you're going to have a hard time pulling that out if you don't rip the threads out of it as well. Cause there, there's rust up in there too. And you'll see in a second. 
So this one I haven't done yet. I already did the other side. It, uh, it didn't go all quite as according to plan as I would have liked, but it is out. So here's the other side. It's already out. Uh, and what I ended up doing was taking the torch and whacking that flange off the end, taking the bolts off plate, whacking the end off of it and uh, just beating it through. I had planned on using a 12 ton jack and a chain and uh, it, this, it wouldn't push it. So I um, ended up having to use a 10 pound sledgehammer and just uh, beat it through. So when it, it went out okay that way. So we did get it out, you know, it took me about an hour, but it's out. So hopefully the other side will come out easier. Uh, so, and the reason I drove them in, I could test this theory here. I took the new pins and uh, actually I put this in from the inside. So if it'll go in there, I know it'll come back out the other way and I did it on both sides. So if you're working with a different model, if you're getting new pins and you want to cut them or and you want to drive them out, because it's always when you're working with pins and stuff like that, it's always easier to drive something in than it is trying to pull it out because then you can put a lot more force on it when you're driving something versus trying to pull it. So I took these pins and put them in, you know, both new pins, put them in from the inside. Now obviously it won't go all the way in because this flange is in the way, but the old bolt or the old pin isn't going to have a flange on it. So, but like I said here, this is pretty, pretty fine fit. I mean, there's, like I said, you get a little bit of rust on the end there, and uh, you're going to have a hard time trying to pull that out. So, so that's why we went with the method that uh, we used here. So. If you're gonna do this, probably gonna need a torch set, <laughs> uh, a bunch of big pry bars. And um, I actually, over my tires and my airbags back here, I put a bunch of old uh, disc blades off that disc that I rebuilt on the farm channel. Um, so if you haven't, if you guys are interested in that stuff and you're not on there, you know we moved all the farm stuff over to new channel. So if you're interested in that stuff, uh, we'll put a link in the description. So if you guys are interested in that stuff, we're always uh, you know, work, working on farm equipment and got animals, chickens now, and uh, a lot of our stuff going over there now that spring's coming around. So uh, if you're interested in that stuff, uh, check that, that uh, channel out as well. So anyways, I put these disc blades on here and a couple of license plates to cover up my airbags because I don't want any of that slag coming down and uh, hitting, putting a hole in an airbag since I just put all new airbags on this last year and they're pretty, they're about 200 bucks a piece. So I don't want anything happen to them and I don't want anything happen to my tires. So I just did that for safe measures. So first thing I do, I'm gonna bend these tabs over, take these bolts out, then I'm gonna cut the flange off this bolt. Uh, then we're gonna try knocking it out. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention you may need is a uh, lifting device. <laughs> uh, Cause it's gonna take probably three or four guys to lift this thing on there if you gotta do it that way. So um, I would recommend having a, a forklift or a tractor and loader like we got back there to, to put it on. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and um, Go ahead and get to it here. So. All right, so yeah, like I said, the first thing I do is uh, take a flat tip screwdriver and a hammer and uh, knock these little tabs off these bolts here so we can get in there with the uh, impact. That one's off. All right, impact. And I save all this stuff. You never know when you might be able to use it for something else. Yeah, so keep a nice little scrap pile on the back and end up grabbing stuff out of there to use for other things all the time. All right, the other thing you want to do is try to clean as much grease 
from around the area because that stuff it kind of catches on fire <laughs> then it kind of pulls up and you never know it could splatter back in your face with a torch or something so i kind of i did that earlier i kind of took a putty knife and cleaned most of that off so now uh i'm gonna go ahead and cut all this flange off but as, like i said these threads here they're they're rusted out and you're you're just going to be fighting like i said this is like a nail head almost and you're trying to pull it the wrong way so you're you're going to have a hard time trying to pull it i mean with all that corrosion and everything else in there so it's easier just to, to whack it off and drive it through if you've got enough room to do that i mean with this particular jost or yost or however you say it uh, fifth wheel plate there's enough room to do it so Fire up the torch here, and we'll cut this guy off. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna trip this fifth wheel to get this handle out of the way for two reasons, uh, because that that rod is kind of kicked back this way and it might get in the way. I think it'll be all right, but if once I trip it, it'll kick it over way out of the way, so I have plenty of clearance. So you can just take a uh, pry bar and hit that jaw in there just like you would as your trail if you were backing in the trailer and it actually trip that. But I'll do that real quick. Yeah, that reason I want to get that out of the way because I want to cut, when I use the torch, I want to throw my uh, slag and everything. This I don't want to throw everything towards the cab and get up into those lines stuff, so I want to throw everything back. So get that out of the way. So we're going to fire this guy up.
just break that off. And I was trying to be as surgical as possible, but I guess it's a pretty big knife. <laughs> So there's that. Just try to get some of the slag off of there. And there's a bunch of that lubricant or, or that rubber or neoprene from that sleeve. It's kind of melting and coming out the bottom. So you want to be careful with that, that you don't splatter it all over your face or something. So you say wear safety glasses. <laughs> Yeah, you see it's stuff like melting out of there. Get that out of there. I'm actually going to cut just a little bit more of that out of there just to, for good measure. Then I'll take the grinder and kind of clean it up. Pretty happy with that. So what I did on the other side, I just took a bolt and stuck it in there and was able to get up on the top and kind of drive it a little bit. But then I had my, my father-in-law come out here. I've got I worked for a railroad uh, as a mechanic, field mechanic for a railroad contractor and uh, was at a store, a uh, power tool up in down in Youngstown, Ohio here. And there'd be all kinds of odd stuff down there, but I got this guy here because I was always driving a lot of pins out of equipment stuff. And this is nice, you can have somebody hold it while you're beating on the other side and you don't have to worry about smashing their hands or something. So it's a real nice tool for, for this type of application. So I'm going to grab a bolt to stick in there, get all this stuff out of the way here, and then uh, we'll get this bad boy out of here and lift it off and set the new one on. So I'm going to be, be done with this and move on to bigger and better things. So, but, all right, let me get all this set up here and we'll do that. All right, so I got everything cleaned up and I took a little bolt and stuck it in there snug. And uh, that's what I'm gonna beat on first to try to get it started. And uh, we'll kind of see how it goes from there. So hopefully, hopefully it'll come out a little bit easier than the other side did.
Well, it's moving. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to need a hand. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Be good. All right, so both the pins are out uh, with a little bit of help from my father-in-law here holding that beater or that pen driver. Uh, so it's a little bit tight on there from those bushings. So I'm gonna take the tractor and loader and uh, get underneath that lift up and hopefully pull it off and uh, we'll get it cleaned up and prepped and set the new one on there. All right, let's start this guy up. Maybe a little too much force.
grease all over everything. All right, so last thing I'm gonna do as far as disassembly goes is uh, get these uh, old rubber bushings out, which will just drive a screwdriver in there and break them and pull what's left of them out like I did over on the other side. Uh, then I'm gonna get, all, take, get some rubber gloves on, get all this great big piles of grease off here, throw it away, cardboard box or something to go in a garbage can. And then um, I'm gonna shoot it all down with some of this super clean here. And then I'm gonna hit it with the pressure wash, back it up over there to pressure wash or pressure wash it off. And then uh, we'll start with the reassembly, starting with the new rubber, uh, rubber neoprene bushings in there. Uh, we'll set the new guy on, put the pins in, lube the pins up, and uh, put them in, put the keeper, bolts keepers on, and uh, grease the new one up, and we'll try it out on the trailer here. So uh, with that, uh, I'll go ahead and show you how, how I'm gonna take this off, and then um, I'll clean this up off camera, then we'll, I'll, we'll go over to the uh, pressure wash there and, and uh, clean it up, so see what happens. So. I'm going to take this out real quick and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so the easiest way I found is this. Uh, these are already, they got hot from when we torched that stuff out. So take a big screwdriver or pry bar. All right, and there are the bushings. So again, uh, like I said, I'll go ahead and clean all this up. It's gonna take a little while. Uh, so I'm not gonna bore you with getting my hands all in grease. Uh, then like I said, I'll spray it down with this uh, super green that they were nice to send us. To, uh, you actually used some of this on that 656 International. If, uh, if you watch the farm channel, uh, sprayed it down on the engine, all that. It had the uh, push rod cover on the side of the engine was leaking real bad and I got a new gasket for it, but I sprayed some of that on there and came out real nice. So I'm hoping I'll get the same results out of uh, this mess here. So let me uh, clean this up and uh, we'll get back to it. All right, so spread everything down with that super clean stuff here, the degreaser. 
and uh, getting ready to hit it with the old pressure washer here. So uh, I'm going to clean it up real quick. Then we're going to push those uh, new bushings in, set the new fifth wheel on, put the pins in, and uh, like I said, move on. Another nice day here. Got other stuff to do. So uh, finally, this will be a nice check in the box of, on the list of things to get done. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and fire the pressure washer here and uh, clean it off real quick.
All right, guys, so we uh, got the fifth wheel all cleaned up and uh, ready to put back together. So I think I'm actually going to split this up, make it a two part because it's getting pretty long as far as video goes. Probably be pushing 40 minutes or so. So I was going to do like a part one, uh, the removal and clean up, and then we'll do a part two, a uh, reinstallation and all that. So, and uh, I said I'm probably about to call it a day anyways. Got some other stuff to do here. So I was going to pick back up on it tomorrow. It's supposed to have pretty good weather and it's getting kind of windy out here too. And that kind of screws up the sound quality as well. So, uh, so anyways, uh, so yeah, the, that's that's the removal process. Uh, you know, with cutting the pins out and all that, uh, probably the easiest way I think, uh, unless you got some type of specialized puller uh, to pull them out. Um, but that's about the best uh, shade tree way that I see to do it. So uh, said uh, that's pretty much it for now. We'll pick back up on it tomorrow and get the the second video out, the reinstallation, put back putting it back on. Hopefully that goes uh, a lot quicker and uh, easier. Hopefully and. Uh, so and that'd be pretty much it. We'll have a nice new fifth wheel on the truck. So uh, again, uh, guys, if you subscribe, if you haven't already, uh, hit the bell for the updates and uh, like the video, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. Uh, you know, on this channel, we're always doing the uh, Landstar stuff, uh, truck maintenance stuff, owner op stuff, and uh, you know anything kind of trucking related, truck maintenance and uh, owner operator type business stuff as well. So which uh, I've got some more stuff coming on that, on that probably next week on. Some more Landstar stuff, kind of numbers and business type of stuff. So we'll get that out to you guys as well. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of starting a new maintenance business also. So, uh, you know, uh, keep your eyes out, open up or, you know, <laughs> watch out for that stuff coming out also. Uh, if you're interested in the farming stuff, we move that over to a new channel uh, with our, our farm name and all that. So uh, if you're interested in antique tractors or working on tractors, farming, animals and all that stuff, uh, check that channel out. We'll put a link or, in the description as well. So. You know, thanks for watching. Appreciate all the support, and we'll see you next time.